please welcome to the stage the CEO of AJC Engineering and former advisor on Facebook connectivity, Alberto Calero. Thank you. Welcome, Alberto. Thank you. Muy bien. Thank you. And uh, Alberto is going to be joined as well by Bogdan State, who is the head of machine learning at Vibrant Planet, and he will be joining us by the magic of technology. Alberto, muchísimas gracias. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Riding the cloud today? Yes, we, are you waiting for some slides? Yes. Okay, do we have some slides? Uh, our wonderful AV amigos at the back. Too. Okay. Fantastic. The, the, wonderful. The, the, Muchas gracias. Okay, well, I'm going to talk about uh, metrics. Metrics uh, are key in this moment for ev everything. Imagine from airplanes, telecommunications, any kind of technology has uh, metrics associated. And with these metrics, you can quantify you know, what's happening, what's the evolution, everything. Well, what I would like to share with you is uh, the complexity of uh, measuring uh, sustainability. Sustainability uh, and the evolution of this uh, sustainability. But also, I would like to share with you the wonders of technology, of data engineering, the latest things, uh, also artificial intelligence, and how these technologies are going to help us in create a, a metrics framework as well as, uh, you know, a trace of what's happening and how we are evolving towards you know, the, the sustainability of, uh, of the world. So let's go to the next, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Well, so first of all, I'm going to, to talk about the Sustainable Development Goals. That is basically the common language that we have in this moment for assessing, basically, the level of sustainability of the world. Look, when you see in the uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, uh, we are not talking about just uh, environment. We are talking about the sustainability of our society. We are talking about anything that uh, could uh, create a problem just because it's just not sustainable. Well, it's uh, basically the story of the 17 headlines of uh, the Sustainable uh, Development Goals of the uh, United uh, Nations. And so, as you can see, uh, we have there a framework. It's not the only one, but we have the most common framework to assess what would be the things that could be a risk in the evolution and in the sustainability of our society. So, if you see here, you know, uh, the most important thing is that the 17th Sustainable Development Goals are just headlines. So we cannot measure this. But as you can imagine, you have a lot of elements uh, below you know, these headlines associated basically with things that you can measure. So just to give you an idea of the size of the thing and the size of the problem, we have uh, um, for each Sustainable Development Goal targets, and the total number is 169, each target has key performance indicators to a total number of 232, but each KPI has 10 or more subdimensions. So we are talking about 2,000 elements that could change and that are the framework in this moment, because it's a moving target, it's constantly evolving, is uh, basically uh, what we have to, to measure, to compare, uh, to compare, to correlate. You know, uh, some of them are quantitative, others are qualitative, so this increases the uh, difficulty, the complexity of what we want to do. But we have to get a number, because if we have a number, then we can see how this number is evolving and how the different actions that we are doing everywhere in the world, companies, governments, uh, civil society, uh, research uh, projects, how they are evolving. So the important thing is not the absolute number, it's the comparison between these numbers that we are creating and that we are updating, okay? So if you see only 86 are uh, the ones that in this moment are quantitative, but this is, as I have told you, a moving target and is constantly evolving. So the next slide, so basically is the same. You know, w the, the difficulty that we have is that we have to measure, uh, considering 2,000 different dimensions, we can select depending on the target that we are focusing, but anyway, 
You know, this is the real problem, the real challenge, the data uh, problem, data engineering problem that we, are, that we are facing. So if we go to the next slide. So if you see, we have uh, problems about the homogeneity of the data, the redundancy of the data, because sometimes you have the same kind of, of uh, data, but uh, with different formats constant data update and uh, correlation patterns, and also data reach. You know, what are we going to add? What are we going to delete? How the metrics are going, or the reference of the metrics are going to transform. So we go to the next slide. And so here you have an example. For instance, this is uh, an example of the uh, 17 uh, sustainable development goals and also you know, uh, in this example, uh, the purpose is to see how the information technology is uh, connected or the importance that information technology and telecommunications is having, you know, in each of, in each of them. So you see green, uh, that is high, also you have uh, positive correlations, negative correlations, also you have very low. So this is basically uh, just an example of the things that you are managing when measuring these, uh, these kind of things. This is uh, made by uh, the group of Jorge Pérez, uh, you know, in the Polytechnic University of Madrid, that is a unique team in developing, you know, the new uh, metrics, uh, you know, associated with uh, uh, sustainability. And this was associated with one of the research activities that they have. So the working model, basically, is that, uh, you know, you, you need to have a number. Uh, each project could be measured, you know, uh, to more or less extent to each of the dimensions, you have the possibility of selecting them. Them, Of course, you don't okay. need to be yep. uh, well uh, aligned specifically you know, with, the, um, with uh, all of them. And uh, you know, this is basically you know, the very complex environment in which uh, uh, we are. So here, uh, what I would like is to introduce you Bogdan State. Bogdan State is in New Zealand in this moment. Thank you, Bogdan, for being with us, because it's a little bit late for you. So basically, he is one of the persons uh, that uh, has uh, developed some of the technologies that in this moment are used, are being used and can be used in uh, managing this complexity you know, that we have. Mixing data engineering, mixing uh, basically uh, artificial intelligence, and also uh, you know, managing you know, not only data, but code. So he will explain this uh, special mix between data and code that we have these days and how these technologies can help in managing all this uh, uh, great uh, sophistication and complexity that we have, but that are go is going to be key you know, in, if we want to do something in terms of measuring how we are evolving to a more sustainable world in all their aspects. So Bogdan. Um, um. Yeah, um, thank you, Alberto, uh, and, and thank you so much for uh, for hosting me. Um, um, and I'm I'm really excited to uh, to talk uh, to talk at this uh, this conference. Um, it seems like we're having a bit of an issue with the slides. Um, there's a separate slide deck that I had prepared uh, that had, has a few things about Aorist. Uh, mm, there we go. There we go. Um, okay, I see. I see. I uh, I don't seem to be able to f see it on my screen, unfortunately. So I'm just going to. Uh, okay. So we're at the start. Um, sorry. Um, and um, okay. So we seem, um, of course, uh, calling from uh, the other side of the world. Uh, quite literally. Ah, there we go. There we go. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, okay. So uh, right. Um, so um, the. The framework in which I, I think about sustainability data is that it also has to be sustainable data and uh, and specifically that we need to engage in sustainable data engineering. And by sustainable, I really mean uh, data that is maintainable, that is well understood, that is replicable, and that is well sustainable. So. Um, a bit about myself, really quickly. Um, I am currently the head of machine learning at Vibrant Planet, a climate tech startup. Uh, prior to that, I founded a data science consultancy. Uh, and the project I'm going to talk to you uh, about today started when I was uh, working as a consultant. 
Uh, prior to that, I spent seven years on the Facebook Core Data Science team working on uh, a varied number of projects. Uh, I came to data science and, and later data engineering through an unconventional background. Uh, started out in sociology where I encountered a lot of very diverse data sets. And then uh, I decided to go uh, further into computer science. Uh, and and uh, at some point I was trying to be a historian. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, a bit a bit really quickly about Vibrant Planet. We're a public benefit corporation and a nonprofit data trust. Uh, we focus on applied science and technology to make forests and communities resilient. Our focus is specifically on forestry. We want to mitigate the impacts of climate change. You may have noticed the forests are burning. We are trying to get the forests to burn less or in places where uh, fire is part of the forest ecosystem to burn in a smart way so that they don't take out houses and livelihoods and ecosystems. Um, Land Tender is Vibrant Planet's first product. It actually launched. You can, uh, you can check it out online. It's a system for adaptive land management. Uh, it's also a, plat it's a platform for planning forestry interventions such as thinning, control burns, and herbivory. Um, in, in any case, so my role there is to deal with the climate data challenge. And, um, you know, what, what is this data challenge? Well, uh, first of all, you know, it starts from the premise that, well, we can do something about climate change. We are not powerless. There are things such as forest management, regenerative agriculture, green energy, carbon capture. There, there, are, there are many potential solutions. Uh, and we need to do something about it. We owe it to ourselves to at least try. Uh, but deciding what to do about climate change requires data. And yes, data is everywhere. And moreover, a lot of good data is free. And I'll talk about that in a second. Making this data useful at all is a very different story. To my right, uh, or uh, above me, I guess, you can see an instance of a satellite image. It's actually an orthomosaic. It's a composite satellite image of Lake Tahoe in California that was derived from a free satellite imagery program of the European State uh, Space Agency uh, called Sentinel-2. It's a great satellite data set. It's free. Uh, but the thing is, in order to get to this image, uh, we needed to run a whole bunch of pre-processing to remove clouds, to, to compute the mosaic, to, uh, to remove various data artifacts and so forth. So we are living in an age of open data abundance. Uh, we are moving away from this old scientific paradigm of scarce data that is very costly to collect and something that people need to protect and build moats around to a paradigm of thankfully open data. We are dealing with large open data sets. So I, I mentioned Sentinel-2 in the remote sensing space. Uh, the, in, in the United States, there's an amazing LiDAR data set, for instance, uh, you know, in the forestry space. Previously, I've worked with OpenStreetMap data, with Wikipedia data. And um, regardless of the domain, the thing is the, that academic scientific computing needs to advance to deal with this new world. But... Um, this is not a new challenge. Modern data engineering has evolved uh, in Silicon Valley companies, in particular, but also in, in telecoms and uh, you know in a number of, in a number of industries, uh, wherever companies have had to deal with very large data sets and an open source stack. Uh, composed of a number of technologies has emerged, uh, you know, storage technologies such as the S3 standard, the MinIO or HDFS, uh, distri uh, technologies for distributed compute such as Spark or Pr Presto, Trino, Dask, uh, you know, technologies for ETL pipelines such as Airflow or Prefect or now there's DBT, technologies for orchestration such as Kubernetes and so on and so forth. Um, now, the problem is that um, you have this hard to manage computational complexity that, that uh, means that um, whether you're a private company, uh, a nonprofit, an academic department that has, uh, you know, one of these like data warehouses, uh, oftentimes you have a combination of various technologies. So it's really hard to manage how all these things, uh, you know, connect together. And um, the goal of this management is enabling scientists to produce efficient, reproducible, maintainable computations against very large data sets, AKA, science, you know, that science ultimately is a kind of computation. Um, so the code generation, so the, the solution I focused on is called Aorist. It's a reference to uh, a Greek, uh, an ancient Greek and Turkish tense, by the way, it's a 
timeless tense. Uh, and it, it focused on the idea that when code gets complicated, we auto-generate it. This is like a, a very old idea in software engineering. You can see it nowadays. Uh, you know, it's a common approach uh, when it comes to uh, to um, products like Terraform and Helm for infrastructure, Node.js for front end. But really, it's it's been around since since computers. Uh, you know, like we don't write assembly code, we don't write uh, machine code because it's very hard to write that. So we write in higher order languages and we always go one level, you know, more levels of abstractions as they are needed. Um, so kind of an, uh, an idea that has been around for a while. The other idea that has been around for a while is that of declarative syntax. And so this, this is the idea where we want to separate as much as possible the desired end state which is something we might care about as scientists, as policymakers, or um, you know, at a very high level. It's like where, you know, what data do we want? What sort of data assets do we do we want, and where do we need them to be? From how what from how we get to that end state, um, and that's where the code generation uh, part comes in. So, how does this thing work? Uh, you describe your data universe in a file. You say, hey, I want the COVID-19 global incidence data set. You know, it, it lives here on the web. And I have this other food security data set that some colleague gave me, and I have it on a network mount. And I can tell you the path to it, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, then you document the steps required to reach your end state. So your end state is, I would like these two things joined. And then separately, you have something saying like, well, to join these data sets, uh, you know, one way to do it would be to download them, then sort them, then use the Unix join command to stitch them together. This is a very kind of like archaic way of doing a, a, a join of stitching together two data sets, kind of like two decks of cards, essentially, but it, it, it will work. Um, and AORIS then gives you code that will achieve your goals. Um, you know, it gives you, and this code can be Python, can be a Jupyter notebook, which is kind of, uh, which is like a graphical data interchange format or a code interchange format. Airflow, which is uh, a standard for data engineering pipelines in big companies, and and soon it will also give you R code. Uh, Aorist is available. It's an alpha. It's open source software, uh, MIT licensed. Uh, you can go to Aorist.io to try it out. Um, uh, it, uh, you know, I'm. I'm quite excited about it, so uh, let me know if you want to try it out. Um, let me give you an example of like what I mean by this thing. So here's a minimal example. I, I took the liberty of, of placing some minimal amount of code here. I, I won't bore you with it very for very long, but the idea is that uh, you know you have um, you you have a number of data sets uh, that you you import from a, a from a data set repository, essentially. These are just definitions. They tell you where the data lives. They're not the data itself. The data sets could be much larger than you know you can store on a single machine. Then you get your, your data sets together. You say, you know, I would like these data sets replicated to a local database. In this case, it's a very simple database just to make this fit uh, in, in a single screen. And then I say, OK, these things should be replicated uh, you know, to, this, uh, to this local data set. Then I create my universe. And then you know I generate my code and I can run the code, and then uh, here's what there is to enable. So it enables quick iteration so, uh, where it's possible. Bogdan, yeah. hello, hello. I'm so sorry. Um, we need to draw this fascinating session to a close. I absolutely loved it. Open data as abundant as nature itself. That was wonderful. Can people reach out to you on LinkedIn um, to to get more information? Would that be okay? Sure. Yep. Oh, uh, fantastic. Absolutely. That's uh, great. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you have any uh, any other questions about uh, about how AORIST or uh, data engineering can be used for sustainability data or in general. And uh, yeah, you can uh, reach out to me uh, at uh, aorist.io. You can find me at blogdon.vibrantplanet.net. Um, once again, thank you so much for your time uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. Oh, okay. fantastic. Thank you, Thanks Bogdan again. and Alberto. Wonderful stuff. Absolutely brilliant.